correct me if I'm not making sense for things. So, <laughs> um, so a couple of things I want to dive into are an organized digital workspace, because with all of us working from home, I think that's something that's super, super important and impacts productivity a ton. Um, also email and inbox systems so that you can be more productive with your email. And then my signature three P's of productivity, uh, which is my routine and process that I use that has completely changed my business. And I also put it in place for my clients and change their businesses and how they get stuff done. So um, the first thing diving into is the organized digital workspace. So what is a digital workspace, right? Um, your Google Chrome or your browser, whatever you're using, um, all of your bookmarks, all of your digital files, your email inbox, your extensions, um, all of those different things can affect your productivity hugely. And um, if you don't have an organized system for them, it can make it hard to get stuff done. You can get distracted very easily. Um, and it's just a productivity pillar. So with the um, digital workspace, also the project and task management piece comes into play. Uh, I can't dive into that too, too far because I've talked about that for like three hours, but um, that piece of it comes into play too. So what happens is we all have different devices, right? So you've got your desktop, your laptop, maybe multiple laptops, you've got iPads and iPhones. And if you're working on multiple devices in multiple places, which a lot of us are doing now working from home, um, if you don't have everything easily accessible, it can kill your productivity. So um, diving into kind of the bookmarks piece of it and the digital workspace side, I'm just going to share my screen because it's a little bit easier to kind of walk through what I'm talking about instead of just talking. So I'm going to share and then can everybody see the screen? Yes. Oh, and I'm going to move this to the bottom because it's in the way. Okay. So I am a Chrome fan. Um, everybody kind of have, has different preferences on this, but I feel like Google Chrome is the most versatile. Um, you can easily access it from any different device and computer. Um, it's really funny because I'm actually an Apple person, like all the way on everything else except for Google Chrome. So um, basically you want to make sure you have, you only use one browser. Um, I see a lot of people using multiple browsers and then they have bookmarks everywhere. They have programs everywhere they have apps everywhere. Um, and it becomes very distracting and hard to get stuff done when you're having to bounce around to a million different places. Uh, I'm also not a fan of having 75 tabs open at the same time. Uh, so that can definitely kill productivity bouncing back and forth between a bunch of different things. Um, so having this digital clean workspace is super, super important. So how I've broken down my bookmarks is I, the first thing I'm going to say with bookmarks is don't bookmark everything. I see way too many people bookmarking all kinds of articles and websites and things to go to later and things they want to look into. And what I've found is people don't actually go back to those bookmarks. They save them, they clutter up their digital workspace, and then the next time they're looking for that, they go to Google because it's faster. Um, so really the only things that I bookmark are programs, softwares, different tools that I actually access very, very often. Um, so you'll see here all of these folders at the top, super, super organized. I can click into personal and these are different personal accounts or subscription boxes or kids school things that I need to get to often. Um, breaking down business things. This is all like back end business stuff. So Google analytics, your website stuff. Um, these are actually the admin logins for my different websites, my website hosting, those different things. Um, I don't access these super, super often, but when I go through my monthly checklist at the end of the month, it makes it really easy to go check analytics and check these different things all in one space. Then I've got my social folder. So these are the logins to all of my diff different social platforms. I can access those super easy. I've got a financial tab here that has all of my different things inside of that for finances, my Stripe account, PayPal account, QuickBooks, mileage, all of that good stuff. Um, then I've got personal development. This one's a little bit of a bigger folder, but I essentially have got my affiliate programs. So anyone I'm an affiliate for, I can check my dashboard to see if I've made any kind of commission. I've got courses. Um, this one is a huge problem I see, especially in the online space is we all sign up for a million different courses. Um, this is actually courses from probably the past three years and I can actually easily access them if I need to reference them. Most likely I've already taken them, I've already looked through them, 
But what I see is people buy these courses and then never go to them because they are in their emails, they got deleted, they don't remember they bought them. And this way I have easy access to all these different resources. I also have a networking folder, which is two different networking groups and events that I can look through and find. And then these two are probably not relevant for most people, but I've got a membership site. So all of the different tools I use within my membership site are here. Then my podcast, the different tools I use within that. And then these bookmarks here are the apps and programs that I use pretty much every day. So Asana is my project management, Kartra is all things funnels, products, all of that good stuff. Pipedrive is my CRM. This is my project or my proposal tool and then Airtable and some other things. So doing it in this format does a couple things. It's super organized, but it also allows you to focus in those specific areas when you're working on those things. So when I go to the podcast and I need to do things with the podcast, all of my podcast things are here. When I need to dive into membership stuff, all my membership stuff is here and so on. Um, so really situating it in a really organized fashion, I'm able to click around, find the different programs I'm using and dive straight in and do things as opposed to like, oh wait, where's this? Where's this login? Where's this? Um, another piece of this is my extensions. And I don't know if anyone's heard of LastPass, but you need LastPass in your life. <laughs> um, LastPass is a password sharing app and password saving app. It's essentially a vault that you have a master password within and it saves all of your passwords for you. So essentially, if my desktop died today, I could go log into Google Chrome somewhere else and have access to every single thing that I need. Passwords, extensions, bookmarks, programs, apps, all of that good stuff. Um, so having a really organized here is super helpful for productivity. Having my extensions here and the different programs I use all the time, super helpful. And I can switch from device to device and have all of this access at the same time. I'm gonna pop open the chat. Last pass is essential, yes. Yes, Libby, we got off the phone and you downloaded it. <laughs> Yay. Um, so that's one piece of it, right? Is the bookmarks, the extensions, having a really organized um, Google Chrome. I keep saying Google Chrome because you should all just Google, get Google Chrome, it's the best. Um, another piece of that though is your digital files. So I use Google Drive, obviously. Um, one of the things I stress to a lot of people is the people that are using multiple drives, so like, Google Drive, Dropbox, your desktop, your laptop, all the different things, right? It makes it really difficult to know where you put things and to find things. And then you spend tons of time trying to find it. You are looking to see if you put it in Dropbox, it's actually in Google Drive. You might have duplicates. You've got files that are the same, but have maybe had some updates. So it makes it really confusing and it kills productivity very, very quickly. So I actually don't save anything on the desktop of my computer for any longer than we'll say three days. <laughs> um, basically when I'm downloading videos and things like they live on my desktop until I process and put them into Google Drive, which I'll get to that routine here in a little bit. Um, but everything lives here. Everything's in Google Drive. So that kind of dives into the organization system within this to keep the organized dig digital workspace going. I've got a very, very simple folder structure here. It is either business or it's personal. Uh, GoodNotes is actually just a backup of my digital note taking app and it has to live here. I would love it to go into this business folder, but it won't work if I do that. So, um, but then I really only have a few categories within business because everything kind of falls into big buckets. So everything is going to either be some sort of business development. So that's marketing, sales, all of those different pieces, business operations, which is all the back end stuff and then client services. Um, again, this data dashboard, this is something I reference super, super often. So I don't want it to be too deep into the folders. Uh, but these three things are like the three big categories within business. Pretty much anything you do falls within those three categories at some point. So inside of business development, this is where I've got the podcast. I actually have a to do folder because there's a bunch of random things that need to have something done with them. That's typically not here. I just had a bunch of files that I needed to go through. I've got all of my branding content. So that's all of my videos, photos, branding content, logos, all of that different stuff lives within that. Blogging, my courses and personal development type of stuff that have big files, old content, those types of things. So within business development, I've started to break those down into different categories 
but I try not to have too many folders and I try not to go too deep within the folders because it, it, it becomes hard to find things. So then going back out into business operations, this is all the back end, like financial and legal and all of that kind of stuff. And again, don't have tons of folders here. And then client services just breaks down clients per person and um, old clients that are archived. But that's how all of my things are structured in my digital space. So as far as my email inbox, those are how my, fo my folders are in there. It's business, clients, and personal. Um, as far as all of the different pieces of my digital workspace, this is pretty much the structure that I follow. So Google Drive is another piece of your digital workspace and your productivity within the digital space. So um, the other piece of it is your inbox, right? How many people have like all the emails all the time? <laughs> Everybody. And they're like nonstop. They just keep coming at you. And um, I've seen people that keep a inbox zero, which I can't even do all the way up to like hundreds of thousands of emails, which gives me lots of anxiety, but I totally understand because it comes in and it just doesn't stop. Uh, but as far as your inbox, I have a kind of system that I use within your inbox to help you clean it up, but also set up a structure to keep it that way, uh, like moving forward. So I've got my five Ds for cleaning out your inbox. So the first is delete. And if you're a person that has those 100,000, this might take you a little bit longer, but um, really going through and just completely deleting things that are not needed and almost like email bankruptcy, <laughs> just like starting over. Um, but even if you have just the normal amount of email too, that's something that you have to do often is just keep deleting things that are not necessary. The second piece is discouraging stuff from even coming in there in the first place. Um, we all sign up for a million different newsletters, a million different things. We get all the emails, all the coupons, all the client correspondence, um, but whatever you can discourage and is it adding value to your business, your life, then you need to try to get it out of there so that it's not cluttering up and killing your productivity. Um, I use a service called Unroll Me, so U-N-R-O-L-L dot me, and it essentially it lets you unsubscribe, and I'm putting air quotes around that because it does not technically unsubscribe you from things. It essentially just drops it into an unroll me folder and it skips your email inbox. So for me, I go through once a month and figure out the things I don't want coming to my inbox anymore, and I will unsubscribe through this service and it drops it into that folder. Now, I have access to that anytime I want to get to it, if I want to scroll through that, but it, it basically skips your inbox so that it's not cluttering that up. So really discouraging stuff from coming in there in the first place. Another piece to that is I actually don't get emails from my team and I don't typically get emails from my clients because we have other forms of communication. Uh, my team and I actually work completely solely in Asana. Everything, any kind of communication that happens, happens within the different tasks and projects. And emails and things with clients are very, very limited because we typically use Boxer to communicate because it's easier or their project within Asana. So that also discourages emails from coming into your inbox if you can communicate with your team and your clients in a different way. And then after we are doing that, that kind of ties into the next one is delegating. So when stuff comes into your inbox and it's not something that you need to do, you need to pass it off and then archive it away. Uh, now I take it a step farther because I'm a project manager and operations person. I'll set up a follow-up task to make sure I check back in, to make sure they actually did it. Um, but anything that you can get out of your inbox and delegate off to people, it's gonna help you clean your inbox and be more productive. Uh, the fourth D is deadline. So I see too, too many people doing this and it's really easy to do, so I totally understand. But if there is something with a due date in your inbox, do not use your inbox as a task list. <laughs> that needs to be moved into your project or task management tool. Um, because the, the whole thing with productivity is like batching and doing things. So if you go into your email inbox and use it as a task list and then emails just keep pouring in over and over and over, you're never going to get anything done. <laughs> you're gonna get distracted, you're gonna answer those emails, you're gonna bounce around and you're gonna task switch, which is really difficult and it hurts productivity. So anything that has a due date on it needs to go into your task list to get done. Um, I actually only check my email twice a day, maybe three times a day. I turn it on in the morning, I check it, I turn it off, 
to actually get stuff done. Then I turn it back on around noon, do the same thing, and then I turn it right back on before I am closing up and kind of finishing things out. Um, so that also helps productivity because I'm not looking at emails all day long. The last D in the five Ds for your inbox detox is document. So this is really to create a simple folder structure within your email. And it is very, very similar to what I already showed you in my Google Drive is I have a business folder, I have a personal folder. Um, under business, I really only have clients, financial, networking, and coaching. Another problem I see a lot of people do is they have folders and subfolders and subfolders inside of subfolders. You're never going to look through that folder structure. So I have a clients folder and anything client related gets dropped there. I have a financial folder, anything that's a receipt that's coming in gets dropped in there. So then I'm not having to try to find the subfolder 16 folders down to file that. Um, so making sure you just create a really simple folder system inside your email inbox. Um, I actually have a free resource on this if you guys want to look over on my website that like explains the inbox detox in a little bit more detail and there's some additional resources and tools and all of that good stuff. Um, if you just go to processforprofit.co forward slash shop, the free things are on the top. Um, okay, and then the last one is my favorite, my three P's of productivity. Um, and Libby and I were actually just talking about this, super fun. Um, my three P's of productivity are process, plan, and prepare. And this is a routine that I put in place and has literally completely changed my business and how I'm able to get stuff done and like increase my productivity like no other. So um, at the end of my day, and this is a routine that takes me about 15 to 30 minutes, depending on the bulk of work I've had for the day. Um, and also just kind of depending on what my following day looks like. And I've kind of got it down pat, so it takes me a little bit less time. It probably would take somebody just starting this more like 45 minutes to an hour. But um, at the end of my day, I essentially, I take notes on my iPad all day long. And I've got different notebooks for each client. I have the notebook for April. And essentially, I'm taking notes throughout the day, doing all of my calls, my client meetings, whatever that looks like. And at the end of the day, typically in your notes, there are lots of action items things that need to be added to your to-do list, things you need to follow up on, people you need to check back in with, whatever that looks like. And what I see a lot of entrepreneurs and business owners doing is they don't process through that information at the end of the day. So then things start slipping through the cracks. They start forgetting to do the follow-ups. They forget to send the calendar invite. Then they double book themselves. Um, things just start slipping through the cracks because all of these things live inside of your notes, which may be digital or maybe on paper or notebooks or sticky notes, whatever that looks like, and you're not processing what's happening. So at the end of my day, I go through all of my notes, all of my notebooks, all of the different things I've done throughout the day. Any kind of action items go into my project management tool. Any kind of calendar invites get sent out and get put on my calendar. Um, any kind of follow-ups get put into my CRM if it's related to a person I need to check back in with. Um, so any of the action items get moved somewhere with dates on them so something can happen with them. So processing everything that happened, getting it where it needs to go. So that's the first step of the three Ps. The second step is planning. So um, a lot of people, what I see is they don't plan for the following day. So then it's, they have to spend whatever, 30, 45 minutes, an hour of time in the morning planning what their day even looks like. And then at that point, you've got everything just coming at you. You've got new emails, you've got clients calling you, you've got team members, all of that. And then it gets really difficult to actually get stuff done. So essentially what I do is I pull up my Google Calendar and I pull up my project management tool and I will plan things out. I will make sure that I've got buffer time before and after calls. I will make sure I know what tasks I'm doing between my calls and meetings. And I really just map the whole day out. Now I have a whole like weekly plan planning process because I plan for my week on Fridays, but as we all know, every, every day new things come up and things have to shift and change. So that's why I do this at the end of the day is I'm planning for the entire next day to make sure everything's in place. Um, so after I've done that planning, I know exactly what's going on. The third P is preparing and those might sound the same and they kind of are, but essentially I'm preparing any kind of meeting notes, client notes, client files, anything that has to do with the things that are on my plan. Um, so in my digital notebook, I'll pull up all of the clients that I'm talking to the following day um, and write kind of like bullet points of what we're going to be talking about that day or things we need to cover. 
I will go through and make notes of people I'm talking to for like virtual coffee chats or whatever that looks like. And essentially I'm just setting my day up. So really this three P's of productivity is to set you up for success the following day so that you can hit the ground running and literally just dump it, jump into your task list and start, start your day. So it has really, really, really increased my productivity. And I feel like I get so much more done. And I know Libby was talking about it too. She's like, holy moly, this is amazing. So um, I definitely suggest trying it now, like everything, it's a habit and it's going to take a little bit to put in place and to kind of like get your own flow for that. But um, processing, planning and preparing will be a game changer for productivity. I guarantee it. So um, that's really all I had was kind of those three areas, the inbox, the digital workspace and three P's of productivity. So if anyone has questions, I could talk about other things forever. So. <laughs> So Brittany, I just wanted to add that the, the thing that, that doing the three P's at the end of the day has also done for me is it's kind of made me utilize every second during the day so that I can limit my time at the end of the day. So I'm like, oh, I'll just go ahead and schedule that right now. I've got a couple minutes, you know, um, so I'm sort of thinking about that. I'm going to what I'm going to need to do in my three P's time all through the day. And so that's really helped my efficiency a lot and my effectiveness. For sure. Although, yeah. And I would definitely suggest putting the three P's of productivity time in your calendar and actually blocking that off so that you do that. I don't just because it's complete habit now at this point. So I don't want to clutter up my calendar, but um, yeah, if you're just getting started and doing this habit, I would definitely put that, that time in your calendar. And you also brought up a good point too. The two minute rule, if it takes two minutes or under, like just do it right now. <laughs> like, don't put it off, don't put it on a list, like just do it. It's just easier that way. Yeah. So, so Brittany, what about the fourth P of prioritization? How do you, how do you, uh, I just, how do you actually, um, do you have a method for prioritizing your, your work in, in, in like, a, like a way like ABC or is there some way to do it that you recommend? Um, so in my project management tool, I try to do like high, medium, and low urgency type of stuff. A lot of that I think comes back to like planning for the month and kind of like bigger picture strategy stuff and knowing your goals for the month and, and that kind of thing. So I think it's going to be different per person, but um, obviously like client work takes precedence over business development for me. So um, any kind of client stuff that has to be done, that's always going to be top priority versus me building cool things in the background. So um, I, I do think it's, it kind of ties into your bigger picture plans, but um, using some kind of like labeling system or color coding system so that you can kind of see that visually is going to make that easier for you too. I also um, just every morning write my goals for the year. Every single morning I write down my three goals and I, um, and, and I say, what am I going to do today to advance my goals? Um, and I make sure that I prioritize that in some way, but I'm like you clients come first yep. <laughs> then, then my goal stuff and then business development. But, um, that's just one thing I do. Yeah, I love that. Did you pick that up from Grant Cardone? I don't, I don't remember maybe cause I am a Grant Cardone fan. <laughs> uh, Jason, Jason, that's why I Jason, laughed at Jason. You're going to write it down twice a day. You do? <laughs> Yeah. Wow. Good. <laughs> so, so I, I actually have a question. So I know a lot of us, um, you know, over the years, if you've been in business for a while, things can kind of get out of hand. Like you just feel like you can't ever, you know, where do, where do you start? I guess is the question. Like you got all these things, you know, your email box is a mess and yeah. you just can't ever stay organized and you're always flying by the seat of your pants every day. Like yeah. what is kind of the first step besides calling you, I guess. Yeah. That's you know, it. But like, what is what is the first? Maybe that is the first step. I don't know. But no. Uh, okay. Um, no. I mean, thing. like you just said, over the years, right? Like you made it a mess over the years. It's not just going to come together magically, right? Um, so I mean, you just have to kind of pick that one area that's the worst for you, and just like dive in and start working on it. So if it's your email inbox and you're the person that has a hundred thousand emails, like schedule time in your calendar for 30 minutes a day to just go in and delete stuff and clean stuff up and set up folders and then just keep doing that until it's done. Um, so yeah, you're going to kind of just have to pick an area, prioritize that and then start in chunks. And all of this is habit. I mean, honestly, 
um, the email and checking email all day long versus checking email three times a day. It's just habit. Um, I turn mine off and I'm telling you like those things alone and notifications too. Like my notifications are not on, on my phone, except for like calls and text messages. Um, I only can see my emails if I click into my emails and then I can see them. So, uh, those types of things are all huge, huge, huge distractions. And if you yeah. just put some habits in place, it just makes things a lot easier. That email thing is probably the hardest thing for me. Yeah. I'll tell you that much. Yeah. You know, it's like, but here's the thing. How many times have you like shut off your email and opened it? And like 90% of it was dire things that like your business was going to die. Probably. No, not. it's, it's not. I just had, yeah, the hard part for me is I have this habit of like wanting to be like super, super responsive to people, like, you know, especially yeah. clients. And so, but you're right. But you're right. If I, at least if I take like two hour chunks, you know, two well, hour chunks where I don't boundaries, you know, that. Like boundaries are a huge piece of productivity. Um, like my clients know that like I will respond during that business day or the next business day, but it's only going to be from nine to five. Uh, they know that I shut my email off and that if I don't get to them right away, I will as soon as possible. So a lot of it's boundaries too, but I, I totally understand like wanting to be super responsive because I'm the same way. But then I yeah. do an email while I'm doing something else and then nothing actually gets done. <laughs> no struggles with the email thing. Uh, I'm sorry, with the tab thing, Naveen? Which, which ones? Do you have a hundred tabs open at the same time? Oh yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. I have I I have this problem of working on thirty things at one time. Me too. Um, you work on thirty at one time, like all of them are only halfway getting done. I know it, it's it's a problem. Yeah. yeah, somehow I can keep track of it all at some point, but like I I not all of it. Sometimes I forget stuff, Michael. Um, <laughs> maybe. Um, but yeah, it's, yeah, it's definitely, I mean, you're right. You're right. I mean, those are things that I get to a point too, where like, if I like this week has been really, really crazy for me and I can start feeling it like spiral out of control when my desktop starts getting a lot of files or like my Google drives a hot mess and I have to like reel it back in and like spend an hour to reset it or else I feel like I'm losing control. Yeah. What, yeah. what about the, what about the differences between like you know, I know some some of us, you know, some people I know already work from home or work virtually already. Um, and I don't know, Chris, you might have some feedback on this too, but what are some like uh, tips, you know, or things in terms of productivity that you would shift with a work from home environment versus, you know, in the office? Like, are there things that we should be keeping an eye on? I know besides kids and yeah. whatever else, <laughs> what, what are the things that we can kind of remove from ourselves to, to stay I mean, productive? I think routine is still huge. Like even though we're working from home, we need to pretend like we're working from the office and still get up, still do our morning routine still, because I, I can feel a huge shift in productivity. If I get up completely, get ready, do all the hair, the makeup, all the things versus if I'm like, eh, we're just going to hang out in yoga pants today. Um, my productivity is completely different. So I think routines is going to be a huge thing. Um, I also think having like a separate workspace, which I know is difficult, especially if people were not used to working from home, uh, but at least like carving out some sort of area that you have that's just for you and business and work and the kids know that like they're not allowed and they can't come in. Um, even though you're going to get those kinds of distractions and things, at least if you have that kind of separate space, it's going to feel more like work, even though you're not going to an office. Yeah. 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 Anybody else have any thoughts on that? Anybody else have like a something that they've been able to put in place that's been helping them out at home? There's a couple things I do. So I have a sign that says mom's on a video call. Do not knock. That's huge. Especially like if my kids come from home from now they're home all the time, but like if they come home from school and they don't know, they bust through the house all excited to tell me something. And it's like, yeah. so I just have that there and they've gotten to the habit where they know like the signs up, don't bother mom. And then I also, I check in with my kids in the morning because mine are older and I tell them I have a call at 10 o'clock. I have a call at one o'clock. I have a call at three o'clock. Don't get on the internet because if you have, I have three kids, so they're all on the internet watching videos that takes my bandwidth. Nothing worse than being on a video call and you're cutting in and out. So, I mean, we have a lot of bandwidth, but who knows what they're doing on the internet or how many tabs they have open. So I just tell them, no, like don't be on the internet and I let them know when it's going to happen. So I don't have those weird surprises. So those two things help for me. Okay. Cool. I could fix that for you, Carissa. 
<laughs> if you could, we should talk about that because it is a pain in the butt. <laughs> so yeah. let's talk about that later. Yeah, it's just a matter of in your router, just setting up permissions for their device and you can cap how much internet speed they have. Let's do it. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. Won't that frustrate them and annoy them though? Like, you uh, know, they get on and like, yeah. yeah. My son hates it sometimes, but <laughs> like I tell him, when you pay the bill, you can have more bandwidth. Until then, <laughs> suffer. <laughs> and don't, just don't tell them you did it and be like, I don't know. <laughs> I have that same problem. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I, I can't figure this out. I don't know what's happening. Hey, I, I just wanted to say earlier we were talking, you asked Naveen about like, how do you get started, you know, when you have these bad habits? Because I'm one of those people that, you know, just kind of lets things, like I hate systems and processes to, you know, to my core, but I have implemented some. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it is habits. It's gotten it's gotten better. But I had this huge realization, and Brittany and I had a Zoom call earlier today, and I told her, I I was like, I I need to go through all my emails. I need to sort them out. I need to make sure I follow up with everyone I've ever talked with in the last year or two. I you know I need to put everybody in the CRM. You know, and so and then all of a sudden I was like, that's never going to happen. I mean, it hasn't happened in a long time. So I just was like, I'm starting today. I'm starting today. Everybody I talk with today, putting them in my CRM, if it's appropriate, right? Following up with them. And I just started implementing that three Ps. It is life changing. Like I, I just let all the rest of it go. Like, yeah, there's probably an opportunity in there somewhere, but you know, start now and do, you know, do good follow up and make sure. Once you get that in place though, it's going to be easier to go backwards and then yeah. start putting some of those old contacts yeah. in and that kind of thing, but you've got to get the habit in place and, yep. and start from there. Yeah, yep. you're right. I have done a little bit of going backwards. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's too hard to think about trying to call through all of it all at once. So. And if there's ever a time to start some new habits, it's right now. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, this was great. This was really helpful. I, I there yeah. are some things I need to do, like unbookmark a whole bunch of stuff that I haven't looked at. <laughs> don't, in five don't years. Them all. You don't you don't need them. You're gonna Google it anyway. And yeah, I, was, I have yeah. Yeah, I think I have 40 bookmarks in my Chrome, but I don't even look at half of them from like seven years ago. Yep. Yeah. Good point. And I I've seen it all, trust me. I get onto people's desktops and computers to like share screens and they're like, oh my God, don't judge me. Like, don't, just, just don't. I'm like, no, but I do it sometimes. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Any other questions for Brittany or anybody? Um, otherwise, what I was gonna have everyone do is um, love to kind of go around and, uh, you know, we're all on Facebook Live too, but love to go around and kind of uh, everybody kind of share what's going on with them. You know, I know we've got a folks, familiar faces on the call, but um, you know, I don't know if uh, Jason, you want to start, Jason, share kind of who you are, what you do. And I know you've also started some, some weekly virtual events as well, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so Jason Alt, co-founder and CEO of Kaufman Media. Uh, we're a digital signage company, uh, but during this time, it's allowed us to pivot a little bit. So we've created an e-commerce division that should be really close to launching. Um, and then we're also in the process of launching a podcast. Um, that uh, is kind of a culmination from the virtual happy hour that we've been doing and just, you know, a, a couple people that uh, I've known through the years that we've decided to, to come together and, you know, just share out some information. Cool. Awesome. When are you launching the podcast? It's a great question. We're actually doing an interview for the first round of content to test systems on Friday. Um, so, but launch date uh, to be determined. Okay, cool. Awesome. Congrats. What's the name? Do you have a name yet? Two drink minimum. Two drink minimum? Yeah. And then uh, it's, uh, you know, business and bourbon basically. So during the, each drink is going to be a session in the podcast. So the first session will be business strategy, sales processes. The second uh, drink will be the uh, interview on who we have as a guest that week. Oh, awesome. That sounds like that's, and bourbon's a good thing too. So that's right. It was a good time. Yes. <laughs> what bourbon will you be having? I think Change we should just do a round robin each time. Change it up. <laughs> my brother collects bird, but he's started a little collection and he's my neighbor. So I get the crux sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> when you build up your listenership, uh, Jason, you can get sponsorship for your bourbon. That's right. There you go. There you go. That's right. Uh, 
Carissa, you want to go? Yeah, sure. Thanks. Um, I'm Carissa Hansen, owner of Virtual Works. I have a virtual assistant business. So our VAs do for our clients a lot of the stuff that Brittany talked about. So you're all, anyone who struggles with these are in good company. This is what busy business leaders don't have time for. So if you, for people who can't um, figure out how to do it on their own, then we have assistants who do that. So we're doing fine right now, staying really busy. It's, I have a virtual company. Um, to help people out, we're seeing a lot more need for social media. People need to be visible now since their businesses are closed. So we're helping a lot of clients with that um, project work. So something example, like Brittany talked about, if you have 100,000 emails and you don't have the time to clean it out, now's a great time to hire a virtual assistant just to do a short-term project. So we're seeing that increasing as well. Um, and then I'm, you know, whatever I can do to give back, I'm also doing 30 minute sessions with people. So if you know anybody who needs some help with anything admin related, the things Brittany talked about, I'll spend 30 minutes to an hour with them and just do it for them or give my advice. So whatever we can do to give back, but I guess that's it. And, and I was going to say that reminds me in the chat window, because I'll share the chat, chat stuff. If you want to put your contact information, anybody out there, and, and maybe like a sentence on like, you know, what you might be able to help somebody with, that'll you know, throw it in the chat window. Um, I'll share that out too as well. All right. Cool. AJ. Hey guys, uh, I think I know everybody on the call, but for anybody else out there who watches replay, AJ Orr with Simple Plan IT. Uh, we are a cybersecurity firm. So we've got a security operations center that allows us to monitor networks in real time uh, and alleviate or eliminate the concerns of data breaches and hacks and things of that nature. Um, during this time, things have been pretty decent for us. Uh, we, we've seen a slight uptick in uh, cyber criminal activity and things of that nature. And so we've done a, a slight pivot with some of the things in which we do. Uh, which is just trying to educate people and put content out there. And so one of the things that we're, uh, knock on wood, we're on pace. I, I hope that we'll have it done by the end of next week, but it's a uh, cybersecurity awareness training, uh, digital management system, so LMS. And we've got a component in there that we'll be able to give away for free for small businesses. And basically it walks them through everything that they need to look at from a cybersecurity standpoint. It, it gives them a checklist on how they can, all the things that they should be checking and then actionable items, uh, some templates for some processes and policies and procedures that they should have in place. And so uh, we'll be able to, I'm super excited about being able to offer that for free to small businesses, uh, hopefully by the end of next week. Awesome. Jack, you want to go? Uh, Jack, right now, the Epi Group, we are a full services financial group for small business owners. Uh, we help business owners with succession planning. And um, right now, things are pretty good. Um, I, I would say it's a little bit more in the trusted advisor area than actual moving money and, and doing that kind of stuff, making major decisions like that. But we're helping our um, business owners with the PPP and the EIDL loans and all that, making sure that they're set up for ways to um, be prosperous when things reopen and the economy goes back to the way things were before. So, awesome. So we do. Hear that phone in the background? <laughs> nice. So, so Jack, so with you, you've been uh, folks on the PPP. Uh, What's kind of been your experience with that? I mean, you know, a lot of us have been kind of frustrated with that, with that program. Um, I, I would say there's been a lot of frustration with that program. Yeah. Um, I, I would say a lot of people have more success with the EIDL loans than they have with the PPP loans. Um, I, I know there's a lot of business owners that are approved and pending funding. Yeah, uh, but they have not seen their funding come through and, and where they are on the list is hard to get confirmation from their banks. Um, and, and then with the SBA loan changing, you know, from a 10000 to to $1,000 per employee and all this other stuff has been a challenge for some of these business owners to really figure out what's best for them and moving forward and, and how to, to take the loan, not to take the loan. What was good here doesn't really still make sense and conversations like that. So, Gotcha. Okay. But, yeah. Michael, you want to go? Sure, I should probably unmute myself. 
Um, uh, I think I know everybody on the call too, but uh, uh, I'm Michael Mushrush and I have a dual role. I know this is a Small Biz Cares uh, event, but uh, I also represent uh, Outreach Promotional Solutions. We're primarily a marketing company, but uh, as everyone is doing these days, Naveen has really uh, captained us through kind of an agile jump and shift in focus of business. So we're uh, working with uh, PPE and uh, we're trying to get ahead of the curve uh, for our clients in, in getting uh, kind of curating some return to work kits and items that they're probably going to want to share with their clients to help build camaraderie, kind of say thank you, welcome them back to the office, so to speak. And uh, so it, it's really been cool watching uh, Naveen be real. You know, everybody's using the term pivot, but it, it's really uh, an accurate term and how we've been able to move quickly and, and hopefully continue to be serviceable uh, and, and community minded for, uh, for our people. Libby. Hey everyone, um, Libby Villavicencio and I kind of do two things. I do nonprofit consulting um, and I have a Schooly Mitchell franchise and with that business I um, am able to help negotiate lower vendor costs for businesses and right now is a good time to do that. Um, so we, we've helped over 22,000 businesses save an average of 28% um, on their, some of their vendor fees. So I put my description in there and um, we offer a free analysis to see if we can save you money. And um, so there's no cost, no obligation. If we can save you money, I just get a share of your savings for a period of time um, and the rest goes to you. So my service is net positive. So happy to help any of you. Awesome, Thank you, and I have to run. I apologize. What? I have to run. My daughter's doing an online art crafty kit thingy right now, so I gotta go. <laughs> no, good to see you. Good to see you. Thank you all. So, I mean, it's, it's two minutes to five anyway. Hey, before you go, before you go, real quick, hold on. Give me one. I know, Libby, you gotta go. Hold on, let me get a picture. Okay. Sorry. I did a screenshot too, but I'm just gonna take a jet. Everybody wave. <laughs> All right, awesome. All right, well, thank you all. Uh, we have another one next week, uh, speaker to be determined. Um, but, um, you know, we'll, we'll have another one next week. Stay tuned for Small Biz Cares Week. Uh, that's, that's the big thing that we're working on right now. Uh, for any of you out there, uh, if you, you know, if you want to be involved in a unique way for that week, just reach out to me directly. Um, you know, we'll figure out a way. We always want more folks to be engaged um, during that week, whether it's sharing, commenting, liking, hosting, whatever that is. So it's all of us, you know, that want to really be part of that week. Um, it takes takes a, a community to do that. So um, yeah, that's kind of my last thing. Um, definitely go to our website, smallbizcares.org. Um, if you want to check out uh, the different things we have going on, you go to our news and events page. There's a lot of content on there, the online fundraisers, the different things. And then thanks, Brittany, for a really awesome presentation. Um, like I said, we'll share this. Uh, we'll share this out to uh, the recording. We'll share that online as well. But um, you know, appreciate your help. And as an ambassador for Small Business Carers, appreciate you being involved with us and kind of connecting us with different folks. And um, for all of you who's been, you know, to our programs and different things, appreciate it. I know it can be tough sometimes, you know, to stay engaged in things. And um, you know, we're a pretty pretty young group, but um, it's really cool to see the, the folks that have been able to participate and get involved. So I appreciate that. So, all right, everybody, good luck uh, with everything. Anything else? Anything last, last uh, words? No. Oh, I got a shameless plug. Uh, yeah. Bunker Labs is hosting an event tomorrow, um, tomorrow morning at 1030. Uh, it's centered around mental health. And so we'll have a couple of mental health experts on on the panel they're going to talk about how this isolation is impacting people and uh the different stress triggers that are that people are experiencing and in, in different ways in which you can kind of cope so if in, that's important to anybody here or anybody that you know feel free to uh, i'll shoot the the link over to you naveen and if they want it okay. they, can, they can join in yeah and sure then, and can they can they see that on face on the facebook page uh, we're trying to figure out how we can simulcast that. I might end up having to do something like you're doing right now because it's set up as a Zoom call. Yeah. Uh, and so it, it will be recorded and we will uh, re-air it. 
um, but we're starting to do weekly programming every Thursday. And so uh, next Thursday is going to be uh, Congressman Steve Stivers is going to be on with oh, awesome. us Very to cool. talk about things from a, this whole situation from a congressional standpoint. So should be good. That is good. That is awesome. Um, so for, whether it's on Facebook, but the, is the event on Facebook though? The event I've got the I've got the event itself on Facebook. I also shared it through LinkedIn, and so I'll I'll push it back up there. Okay, awesome. All right. Anything else? Last words. Hope everybody's doing okay. I know. What is it? We're we're almost at May, and so we'll see what happens. We all don't know what's going to happen. But, <laughs> um, keep keep the positivity, right? I'm, I'm holding on to that. Yeah, keep positivity. We'll get through it, right? Hashtag in this together. Isn't that the thing, right? That's it. That's the hashtag. All right. The thing. Good to see you, Good to see you everybody. Good to you see too. you. Thanks, Naveen. Appreciate it. Bye, everybody. Bye, Thank everyone. you. All right. Bye.